We have here a 2004 Volkswagen Jetta with a 2.0 liter BEV coated engine. And this customer had an appointment to dr come out to the shop for a misfire. And as she was driving to our shop, her clutch quit on her. This is her clutch. And if you can see there, the spring is broken out of it. And there's the spring. And we have repaired this uh, clutch. We'll put a new clutch in it. You can see the clutch being resurfaced in our new brake lathe in the video up in the cards right there. Click that link to see us resurface that flywheel. And now we're going to address the misfire. This clutch, by the way, is just terrible. I'm sure it's not going to come across on video, but this thing is bent and it's dished this way. I would assume that's because this spring wedged in there and I don't really know how it gets this bad. But I can say, if she was driving this for a while with this misfire, that would just rattle this clutch to pieces. You know, this, these springs are in here to dampen the pul torque pulses of the engine. And if the torque pulses are shaking and rattling and jerking like a misfire, that can cause that. Now, these things break sometime without a misfire. But uh, let's start with scanning this thing and we'll see. We'll scan it, then we'll look at misfire monitors to see which cylinder's misfiring, and then go from there. Okay, I've ran an auto scan and saved it. And we'll scroll down here and see the engine codes. Four twenty catalyst efficiency, eleven fifty two long term fuel trim, performance malfunction cooling system that usually means a stuck thermostat, random cylinder misfire, cylinder three misfire, injector for cylinder four, cylinder four misfire, camshaft position sensor, intake air temperature. That's a bunch of trouble codes. Now. Some of these codes might just clear up if we just fix the misfire. Some of them might continue to be there. So I'm going to focus exclusively on the misfire for the purpose of this video. So before we take a look under the hood, let's uh, fire up VAGCOM and look at the misfire counters. Misfire counters on Volkswagens are 15 and 16. And I'll start it up. And you can see there the misfire counters are going up pretty rapidly on the number three. Doesn't really show any misfires on the other cylinders. So let's take a look under the hood real quick. Right off the bat here I see the dipstick handles broken off. Not a big deal. I'm sure they can still get their oil checked with it broken off. And right off the bat, I see some beautiful blue spark plug wires. I don't know if somebody's been working on this already, trying to solve the misfire or what. Usually on misfires, you start on the secondary ignition and see if you have any problems with spark. But obviously things like injectors and compression, etc., can cause misfires also. Let's see if we can get a closer inspection here. Um, you may not be able to see that very well, but somebody has wired in a new connector on the number four injector. We did have a number four injector code, so that probably means that's been fixed. Um, at least I hope so. Down here on the number four spark plug wire right there, right there you can see it's been taped up with black tape. Uh, I would assume that's probably because it was jumping spark between the uh, spark plug wire in the head so somebody taped it up to try and prevent that from happening. Let me pull that out and see if I can see anything there. Just taped up is all. Spark plug does look relatively new. I'm trying to tell the brand. Like AC Delco, maybe. Anyway, I uh, pop that back on and we'll check spark coming out of this number three wire. Just 
type of needle nose right here, my favorite type of tool to unplug these spark plug wires. I'm just giving a little visual inspection here. This car's been lowered, by the way. These are racing 10.2 millimeter high energy wires with a two liter non-turbo engine. I think the quickest way to address this is just to simply do a test to see if this is getting spark out of it. And I do have this spark tester. This spark tester right here. I'll put it inside there, we'll clip it to a ground and I'll start it and see if we have any spark across that. Let me move you over here where you can see. I'm going to turn this light off so you can see if it's sparking or not. And as you can tell, no spark coming out of there at all. But do we have a bad spark plug wire, a bad coil, or maybe the computer isn't controlling this coil to fire it? Maybe we should check another cylinder to see if uh, our spark tester is working. In this situation, I've hooked to the number four spark plug wire to demonstrate what it should look like. But what if you don't have a spark plug tester? Let me show you a little check you can do with a cheap test light. So if you don't have a spark tester, just any old cheap incandescent test light, and you hook the ground lead to the battery, and then shove this in your old spark plug wire, and I'll start it up. And you're certainly not going to expect your test light to light, but oh, if you don't have a pair of pliers like this, you're going to end up getting shocked, but these insulate it pretty good. And if I pull this out of here, you should be able to see some spark. See that down in there? That's how you can test your spark is present. I zoomed in a little bit so hopefully we can show you the spark and as I pull it out of there you can hear it and you can see it. You can definitely see that this one has spark. Now this is our number four. That's not where our misfire is. That's just me wanting to show you what known good looks like. So I'm going to shut this off real quick. Put this back on the number four. Pull our number three out again, shove that in there and start it back up. So on our number three, go and pull this out. And you see you're not hearing anything, not seeing any spark happen. So the question is, is the problem our spark plug wire, or is the problem our coil, or is the problem the computer not firing the coil? Now. In order to access this, I'm going to pull this smog pump out real quick, secondary air injection pump, and we'll take a look at the coil down underneath there. Pulling my smog pump out was ridiculously easy because two of these mounts were broken. That one there was broken, that one there was broken, so I only had to pull one nut off. Okay, so we know we have no spark coming out of the wire, but maybe the wire is bad. But let's check real quick to see if we have spark coming out of the coil. So this is our number three. Separate that from the coil. I'm going to stick my test light down inside of there. Start it up.
Okay, I am seeing some sparking down in there. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it out a little bit. I'm, I'm making the distance bigger and smaller so that we can kind of verify if it has the ability to really jump a gap or not. And what's, what I'm seeing here is it doesn't have the ability to jump any gap. It does spark if I'm nearly in there touching it, but it doesn't really have the ability to jump a gap. And if you saw when I was hooked to the number four wire with the test light, it was jumping quite a distance. This one, it won't jump at all. Now I suppose I could pull off the number four and show you that. Guess I'll go ahead and do that. Off with the number four wire. And we'll stick the test light in that hole. And I'll start it up. I don't know how well you can see that, but I'm pulling that out there a good three quarters of an inch, and I'm getting a nice, long, big spark. It's able to jump that gap, and so that's in all the way right there, and as I pull it out, I'm out about three quarters of an inch, maybe more, and I think you can see that spark in there. That's what it's supposed to look like. So right now, we can pretty much assume we got a bad coil. But we also have to rule out the fact that the computer not, might not be commanding that coil to fire on that cylinder. I think the quickest and easiest thing to do is I have a parts car here right now with this exact coil and I know the coil just happens to be sitting in the trunk because the engine's removed. I'm just going to plug in another coil and see how it runs. Okay, here's my known good coil. I wrote good on it there. and. We'll put these wires on one at a time, put this number three back on the spark plug. So number three there, number four there. I'll move the one and two. And I'll unplug the coil. And stick that down there and plug it in and we'll see how it runs like this And that's running really good. I'm going to move you over to the laptop to make sure there's no misfires there. On the measuring blocks. And once again, 15 and 16. And you see there, there's no misfires on the number three anymore. This is one on the number one. There's no guarantee that this used coil that I have is actually good though. Well, no more on the number one. Maybe this coil's fine. So being a Volkswagen specialty shop, there's a lot of times where we have the parts laying around and we can just swap it out really quick. Obviously we could have put a scope on the, the command from the computer, but that would have took looking up, looking up on our online technical service, which wires are which, and getting the scope out and firing it up. Now that really doesn't take that long, but I, uh, I had just had the coil just laying there. I could just plug it in super quick, as you can see. So I can call this customer with a recommendation for replacing the coil. Now sometimes coils do fail because of high resistance in spark plugs and spark plug wires, so it's probably going to be the best recommendation to, re to recommend replacing the spark plug wires and the plugs. Uh, the, now maybe we can reuse the spark plugs 
because they do look like they were replaced recently. But the point is, uh, the customer can make their own decision on whether to replace those plugs and wires, but I, with that electrical tape on the wires, almost for sure they should probably replace those. So it's <clears throat> as soon as the customer makes a decision, we'll update this video. Okay, we have the new coil installed. Plus we put on, uh, this pipe is new, and spark plug wires are new, and spark plugs. And we put a couple mounts on the smog pump too, because they were, two of those mounts were broken. But uh, the customer did choose to go with a dealer coil pack on this one. And there's a part number there if you need it. But let's start this thing up and see how it runs. Seems to run really good. We'll get VACCOM on it and look at the misfire counters on VACCOM while we clear codes. Okay, so we'll scan it. And get those misfire trouble codes cleared. Um, most likely, most likely these extra codes are triggered because I had the, I was testing spark on the number four as a known good comparison to the cylinder number three spark. So we'll clear that. And then we'll check for misfire counters in 15 and 16. Looks pretty good. We'll go for a road test, make sure everything's okay. Oh, and I guess I need to point this out. This is the coil pack that we replaced. This is not an original equipment one. This is an aftermarket one. So this, this has been replaced at some point in this car's life and it failed anyway. So. I'm kind of glad we went with the original equipment one and you might want to take that into account whether you're trying to save a buck or two on a coil pack. If you buy an aftermarket one you could end up doing this job again.